Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, welcome today to our Creating Engaging Content for Digital Signage webinar. Uh, I'm Neil Emery. I will be your host for the next 45 to 60 minutes. Um, just to let you know, I'm one of the directors of Trilby TV. Uh, Trilby TV is a digital signage platform made, made is very important for us, made for education. Um, and I'm very pleased to welcome our guest panel today. Uh, we've got Gavin Smart from Cleveland School, just south of Bristol. Um, we've got uh, Alex Buck from Shirelands Collegiate Academies Trust. Um, Ale Alex, am I right to call you Alex or should I call you Alexandra? No, Alex is fine. Okay. Good. I was thinking about that before the webinar and I just went with Alex. <laughs> Uh, and we've got Hardy Mahal with us as well. So um, I'll let them uh, talk a little bit about themselves after I've done some housekeeping rules. So just to let you know, we are recording the webinar today. So we'll make that available after the session so that you can all come back and watch again uh, to pick up this knowledge that we'll be sharing today. And if you want to share with colleagues as well, of course you can. Um, I'll be using a Padlet wall to drive the webinar, which I do um, every time that we do one of these Trilby TV webinars. And again, we'll make it available after the webinar. So we'll send you a nice email giving you the login details to that Padlet wall. Um, but with further ado, I'm going to let our um, guest panel tell them a little bit more about themselves. So Gavin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so hi, I'm, I'm Gavin. Um, as Neil said, I'm from Clevedon School um, in North Somerset. Uh, just south of Bristol Secondary School, um, and um, an Apple Distinguished Educator, class of 2013. Um, and I work with a, a group of uh, like-minded individuals from across our multi-academy trust to uh, develop digital le learning within their classrooms. And I'm responsible for digital signage at Cleveland School. And most importantly, responsible for digital <laughs> signage in Cleveland School. You're correct. Absolutely. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Alex, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Alex. I'm Marketing and Communications Officer for Shireland Collegiate Academy Trust based in Sandwell in the West Midlands. Um, so I help um, oversee marketing and communications for schools across the trust, acting in an advisory capacity. Um, and as part of that, um, I also do digital signage, um, predominantly for messages from the trust. And that's is that across eight schools now? Uh, 11 actually <laughs> yes and growing <laughs> as as most trusts are at the moment 11 and growing absolutely thank you and hardy tell us a little bit about yourself hi guys good morning everyone uh my name's hardy mahal i am a education technology consultant and a video producer for ta education uh, also known as tablet academy and uh, i predominantly work with uh, delivering uh, creativity uh, workshops uh, around uh, various platforms, uh, but at the moment, specifically with uh, Adobe. And you're working, you're working on quite an exciting uh, project with Adobe and Sky at the moment, right? That's right, yeah. We're, getting, um, the, the, we get, we're creating the next generation of budding news reporters. There you go. Am I too old for that? No, you're never too old, Neil. <laughs> I'll get you in on the next uh, cohort, don't worry. Thank you. Great. Well, listen, thank you for being with us today and, and sharing your, your knowledge and your tips and ideas around creating engaging content for digital signage. Uh, I'm going to share my screen to the Padlet wall. So please let me know, attendees, if this is working OK. So if I click on that one, uh, let's do window and share. Can you see the Padlet wall? Yeah. Yes. Great. Cool. So let me talk a bit about just a little Bit of background why we're here today as a company. Um, as you can see from the images, uh, hopefully top left, if your screen's big enough, that's me in my younger days uh, as an Apple trainer. Uh, I was an Apple sales trainer, uh, a bit like Gavin, I was an Apple distinguished educator. Uh, many acronyms that Apple give you over the years. Um, when the iPad came out, um, it got really busy in schools as we were training teachers on how to use this new bit of technology to impact teaching and learning, to, to, to get uh, students to be more creative with their learning. <clears throat> um, that probably put us into around 500 schools on a yearly basis. And as we sat there in the reception areas of those schools, we would look at this TV screen that was on the wall and was usually turned off. 
Um, if it wasn't turned off, it was playing content that we felt had little impact on anybody. I guess it was like that traditional signage of old that was ticker tape and clocks and logos and the BBC news, and it was doing something, so that was okay. But for us, it wasn't. Um, we were there to do very creative processes, so you know, creating lots of movies and slideshows and presentations with the staff and the students, but there was no nice way to share that content um, to evidence what we were doing. And we looked at that signage and thought, and the screen and reception and thought, wouldn't that be a fantastic way to evidence all of that rich digital content that was being made on those devices? Um, when we asked the schools back then what was running those screens, there was lots of different things, USB sticks that were never updated, laptops running PowerPoints, which I always thought was an interesting one. I thought a laptop was much better being used in the classroom than actually running a digital signage screen, but that's what they were doing, some of them. Or there was some overcomplicated solution out there that was, you know, that people had given up with. It was too complicated for staff, and so they'd given up with it. So there was lots and lots of um, solutions out there that weren't quite working. Um, and that's why we created Trilby TV. We wanted to create a, a platform that encouraged that sharing and showcasing, um, that evidenced all of that wonderful work that was being created on the iPads back then. Um, so we started Trilby TV about 10 years ago. Um, and naively, what you realize fairly quickly is you're in this world called digital signage. Uh, so our first and foremost thoughts was about sharing and showcasing and, and still is for us. It should be about sharing and showcasing and inspiring young people with content. That's really where our passion comes from. Um, but you are in this world of digital signage and it is very much an art. Um, and, it, and it's an art that has some kind of important factors behind it. It's really thinking about where your screens are located. It's thinking about who the viewers are in those screen locations. It's thinking about the time your viewers are in those locations. And then from those kind of questions, you can start to work out what content will inspire that audience. Um, so my first question, thinking about the fact that signage is a bit of an art and you have to understand that art. I mean, thinking about some of your locations, Gavin, um, do you think about your audience and the time an audience will be by a screen when you create your content? Um, yeah, I, th I think I think the time element um, is really, really important because I, I will be sent, you know, um, PowerPoint slides that want to be, you know, fluffed up into something that looks a little bit better. Um, but there is so much, so much uh, content on that one slide um, to try and get across that information, knowing that it's only going to be on the screen for maybe 10 seconds um, is really important. So not 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 only how much is on that one slide, but where to get where to get the most impact um we have we have one screen in our science atrium where there's a lot of there's a lot of footfall and also during lunch times and and, and break times um a lot of students will sit down there and, and and literally just watch the screen whilst they're having their dinner so um yeah t timing timing of you know how long this how long that uh, particular content is on the screen for but also how much is on that one slide is really important yeah and Alex, I mean, you've got 11 schools, so you've got a lot of screens to think about. Again, is, is time that viewers will see content in, in your head when you're creating your content? Absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the screens that are located predominantly in our main areas, um, so uh, similar um, to the as well. So for staff, visitors and students, uh, offices, offices, reception areas, uh, canteens in the main hall, so where students will be, again, sitting having their lunch uh, predominantly. And also um, in staff rooms and corridors. So it's really making sure, again, narrowing down that content. So it's the most important points that are being communicated to our uh, staff and students. Yeah. And Hardy, when we were sort of prepping for this session, you mentioned something really interesting about the bank and the, the, the signage in banks nowadays when you're stood in a queue is, is really focused on the time you're in that queue, but it's also focused on trying to get you to do something else. What was that something else it was trying to get you to do? Yeah, I mean, something I've noticed at quite a few banks now is they, they give you the information um, that will effectively try and speed up the day for everyone so a lot of normally you'll have like you know um a customer service person will come around and they'll they'll ask each person you know hello are you okay what are you looking to do today and some people just out of politeness will just be like, oh yes i'm fine but really they do have a question but they don't want to ask so i've noticed that on the um 
Uh, I know it's you know one of the, the the customer service people is actually asking, do you want to deposit some money? You can do it at the cash machine, and um, you know the same person in front of me just said, no, I'm fine, I- I'm okay. But when I, I mean, obviously we were in the queue together, and they were in front, I could see on the signage it actually said it came up, you know, uh, with the graphic saying you can deposit, you know money into into your account using the cash machine and um so we're both at this this queue for quite a while it must have been a good 10 minutes or so and the person in front just decided obviously they must have seen the same signage that i saw and thought actually it probably is easy if i just go and do this at the cash machine so the signage definitely worked because um you know the, the person asked them uh, that you told them that they could do it that they thought no i'll just wait and do it in the queue must have constantly saw that message over and over again and thought, oh, time's ticking now. I think, yeah, actually, if it says so on the signage, it must be true. So let me go and try it. And uh, so, yeah, so I saw that in real life. So I know that the impact signage can can have if it informs the, you know, the customers correctly. Yeah. And that leads us on nicely, actually, because when I'm talking to a lot of our customers about ideas for content, I get them thinking about signage in outside the school gates, outside the college gates. You know, digital signage is a billion dollar industry. You know, there's a real art, again, around content being made for the right audience. Um, On the Padlet wall, I've got a few examples. And, you know, I remember when we do the Better Education show, I will say to people on our stand who visit us, go and have a look at the signage. It sounds a bit geeky, I know, but go and have a look at signage in the the areas outside the halls. Uh, And you'll notice on the signage around three to four bits of content that go round and round. And what they're trying to do is by the time you've clocked it to by the time you've walked past it, they want you to see everything. And again, that's very important in regards to viewing time. You know, don't show me a 20 minute video if I'm only in that location for a few seconds, because I'm never going to get to watch it. So you have to think about the time of that content. Um, so I've got a few examples on the Padlet wall. I'm hoping if I press these, they're going to play. So I'm going to I'm going to play through these one by one. I might not do them all because of time, but I'll play through a couple one by one, and then I'll just get you thoughts and feedback on the content and the, the sort of the important factors that you know they're thinking about when they're creating content. So this was um, late night, me coming back from London at Exeter Airport. Um, looking at the signage screen next to the platform information screen. So when you're looking at content like that, and I'll, I'll get uh, one of my colleagues is in the background and uh, she's Francesca, she's our marketing exec. She's very kindly going to fill in the Padlet wall so that we have your responses to, to these questions as well. Alex, when you look at that content, what for you stands out thinking about where viewer viewing time, and the way the content is then created and presented, what stands out for you? Well, I'm quite a visual person to begin with anyway. So the fact that you've got those bright, um, bold, sharp colours and the text as well, that's quite um, a standout to me. And the contrast to setting where it's located as well, um, which for me makes it pop out and stand out for more for audiences too. Um, I like particularly the fact that it's not too much text that's shown at one time. It's more digestible um, to the point where a message is supported with an effective tagline of we mean green um, as well. Um, Ideal location, particularly where most viewers are going to be spending the time looking for their train times, where they've got to go next. Um, And it's about educating audiences about the impact of their travel decisions as well. Um, and I think there's that emphasis on the carbon emissions. It's important to note that the importance of that message for society at this time with the way we're trying to, where the companies are trying to go forward at the moment. Um, and it's all, I feel that the word is also sort of given um, audiences that sense of power and autonomy of choice and using that um, to help reinforce that message too. Yeah, I, I do like the tagline, we mean green. It kind of links everything together and I guess helps for future creation of content as well, that you're always going to use that strong tagline. And I think that's a really good idea for schools if they are able to grasp the tagline and use that to build a, a community, an ethos around that sort of tagline, which we'll come on to because that's kind of some of your feedback for the later aspects of this webinar as well. Um, Gavin, what, what stands out to you there? Um, I really like the um, uh, the build of the uh, I think it's network rail or or whatever the the, the rail logo is um, and how that bit how how that comes in, but also how it puts a transition between the the content on the um, uh, uh, the sorry the words that come onto the onto the screen um, because not only are you having a little bit of animation which sort of draws your eye in, um, but also they are putting across their brand. 
um, as well. So, I, yeah, I, I really like it, um, how those lines are used throughout and also the lines are used to not, not just only build the logo, to, but to bring in the different transitions between the content. Yeah, I think <clears throat> animation is always important because it just draws that eye in, that, you know, flat content. It can look <clears throat> fantastic. It, it can look very impactful. But actually, if you've just got that small amount of animation, it helps to draw the viewer's eye into that screen. And I think that's a really good tip for anybody on the webinar today. Think about not too much. I don't want loads and loads of transition, but that gentle bit of animation or movement on a screen can really help um, when it comes to uh, creating your content. Um, so we'll move on to, let me choose another example here. This was an interesting one. Um, my lady's from Estonia, so she went back to Tallinn recently and she stopped at Frankfurt Airport. This was just, um, there's no, these aren't video based, but Hardy, when you look at something like that, what, what, what do you think they're kind of thinking about when they're creating that content and the amount of times it's seen potentially? Well, I mean, straight away, I like the, the, the use of that sort of uh, 2D vector based sort of uh, image that they've got going on. Um, which I think is really clear cut, um, you know, good use of of um, uh, the color scheme uh, with, you know, which sometimes you wouldn't really place a green and a blue together, but that seems to work quite nicely, actually, the green and the white uh, and the blue. Uh, but the focus is on, you know, the one that stands out, which is the blue. So it's trying to get your attention and say, look, um, I'm a, is it, well, I don't know, actually looking at that right now, is it, is it I assume it's trying to say about social distancing. Because the <laughs> distance between, yeah, I'm trying to check it up on the screen here. And that hence why the blue one is indicated uh, a little bit more prominently uh, being in front of the people behind. Yeah. And uh, Alex, there's you, you can see there's multiple screens there. So why do you think that is? Well, I think it's to reinforce the message. I mean, to be honest, when I had the discussion with you about this advertisement, um, I'm not very good in my spatial distancing <laughs> anyway in terms of um, on the image. But... To me, it also looked as if that those screens had been spaced in that particular way. Um, and I think, really, they could be used as a marker for that as well. There's nothing, there's no reason to say why you shouldn't be able to use digital signage in that way if it suits the message and the purpose of what you're trying to achieve as well. Yeah, I think, you know, you're on a travelator there, so you're going past that, yeah, that message quite quickly because... Um, when I'm on a travelator, I kind of speed up because I, I like to do that, weirdly. <laughs> but they want to make sure you see that. So that's I, why. I, I think, Neil, the trick they missed is not having um, the 1.5 metres also in blue to link subliminally the, the person and the, uh, and the, and the text because you just see that over and over again and it reinforces, you know, this person is this much distance away from the other person. Yeah, but it's interesting how they've spaced those screens out. To, to yeah, bridge. that's really cool focus on that you know um i think that, that's good i mean there are other examples there and i'll leave it to our attendees to to have a think about you know that maybe they'll come back to the wall maybe it's an exercise they do themselves to to think about you know signage outside the school gates have a look again i know it sounds a bit geeky but have a look have a look at what the real world look like feel like location wise content wise and and take that back into your own environment uh, and use those ideas to create impactful content for your signage as well. Um, we'll move on to why do we create content, which is a good idea. I mean, I, I think the interesting one in schools is that there's so many staff that potentially look after signage. Yeah, I mean, Alex, you're very lucky. You know, you've got a marketing and comms team for the trust though, you know, so you're, you're managing content across the trust schools. And you have, I know you have people at each school that, that manage that. For you as well so you've got a link into those schools uh, gavin you're you're a, you're a teacher as well as an itc ict specialist you're a teacher um, and it can be lots of different job roles it could be the pa to the headmaster it could be um, someone working in in the front office uh, it can be such a variation of staff that look after signage and again i think maybe they I don't mean this rudely, but mainly they don't have the skills or the knowledge to to create that or think about what does make a, an effective digital signage sort of uh, project. So one of the questions that we should be asking ourselves is why are we creating content? Um, and just to highlight that, I've 
we've created a, a simple uh, content matrix, which I'm hoping has popped up onto the screen. Now, these headings aren't the be all and end all. These are just some that we came up with. Um, so we came up with, uh, are we making content to in entertain, to inspire, to educate, to inform and convince? And of course, content can sit across these as well. So, I mean, Hardy, when, when we look back at the Exeter train station example, where, where do you think that sits on such a, a content matrix? Why are we, why, why has that content been created? Well, well, I, well, I guess like uh, Alex said, there's a big push um, for us to think about sustainability and think about, you know, uh, our own decisions. So they've done really well to, um, to educate us. So, you know, there's the, definitely there's the education piece there. It's educating about, you know, if you take the train, you're, if you know, potentially taking 76 lorries off the road, which is, you know, great. It's a, a, a big plus. Um, I don't really think it's there to, it's not there to entertain us. It's not doing anything funny and there's no laughing and joking because it's quite a serious matter. But, but there, but that I, I do still feel that they've inspired me. I think I've read, you know, reading that on there, I'm quite inspired by, okay, I think I've, like Alex said, I think, you know, as a, as a user and somebody who's decided to take the, the train, um, you know, it's inspiring that we're doing our little bit. I mean, with all due respect, you know, we still have to get to work. It's just, you know, we can, you know, do we make the decision about, you know, maybe carpooling or taking the train as opposed to taking, you know, our own vehicles uh, off the road. So uh, definitely for me, it was it was education and, and it was quite inspiring as well. Yeah, nice. And again, it can sit across those multiple areas. Yeah. Um, Gavin, what about the, uh, the, the German airport, Frankfurt airport uh, content that we had a look at? Where does that sit on here? Oh, you're on. You're on mute. Trying to speed up my uh, internet connection a little bit. Every little helps. Um, so uh, that was the social distancing one, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So um, definitely, sort of inform you about obviously the social distancing requirements. Um, like like Hardeep says, there's there's not much entertainment in there. Um, but yeah, a lot of lot of information and just convince uh, convince you as well to do the right thing. Um, you know, in the, in that time of the pandemic, there was there was a lot of um, you know convincing you that this was the right thing, and having that repetition along that Esca, um, uh, travelator, you've got you've got then the the um, you are well informing them to do the social distancing, but also convincing them to do the social distances. So definitely down in that bottom right hand corner, an element of education as well, I suppose. You know, the 1.5 metres, the two metres social distancing, that is, you know, you're educating the person of that and the importance of that. Um, yeah, so not not much entertainment, but towards the sort of bottom end of that matrix that you've got there. Yeah. And Alex, thinking about sort of aligning what we see outside the school and aligning that with what happens within your school. Mm -hmm. If I said to you, staff rooms, where where would content for you sit on this sort of matrix if you're going to make content for a staff room? So really for our staff room in particular, it should be to inform. Um, so for, although I do predominantly messages from the trust, it should be to keep uh, members of staff up to date on things happening, not just within their schools, but across the board as well. Um, so our content is predominantly structured around our uh, trust values of inspire, inspire innovate and collaborate. Um, so that, goes across the board, not just to content that's developed for students, but also for if we have uh, visitors and staff wise as well. Yeah, and, and Hardeep, I mean, you're very student focused. So if we're going to create content to, you know, for our, for our student viewing, what, what sort of headings here should we be thinking about? Um, I think because, uh, you know, we, we're in the YouTube generation now. Uh, Neil, I think you've got to entertain them first in 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 some way, you know. And not to say that the content can't be informing, but I think we have to think um, a, a visual. I think we have to think visually in terms of you know getting their attention as soon as possible. Just like a YouTube video, if you can't get them within three seconds, sometimes it can be hard to to to, to keep them there. Obviously, if it's in a 
a, a specific location within the within the school where the students are going to be congregating anyway. Maybe that's a little bit easier because they're more sort of, uh, you know, that that you can target them a little bit more. But if they're walking around the school in different areas, maybe where there's not such high pupil traffic, um, then I think we need to uh, get their attention really quickly. Uh, and that's where sort of you know, like Alex was saying, the you know, the, the branding and 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 the good sort of color schemes and things like that are what normally attract tra attract them in. Um, if audio is on, having a good sound bed works as well, <laughs> works as well. Having a good soundtrack, uh, but yeah, yeah. That, I think you have to. I think you have to kind of entertain them firstly, or at least have some sort of hook to get them to look at the screen, and then we can then we can inspire them and educate them. I think that's really important. I was on a few conversations yesterday, all about inspiring young people. And I think we forget that sometimes. I'll, I'll move this question towards Gavin. One of the one of the things we get a lot when we're doing demos is, can I have a countdown clock so that students know when they should be in class, which I kind of get, but I want to be inspiring them and not pushing them to a point where they, they almost rebel against something like that. What, I mean, what's your thoughts about there's a balance and a medium there? How do you how do you how do you approach that? Um, we we we've I've also been requested to do sort of a similar thing. Um, my my take on it really was um, obviously with Trilby TV and schedules. We have just different schedules that run. Um, so the main screens outside the hall where a lot of there is a lot of footfall just before tutor time. Um, when it was year eleven exams, we just put a lot of inspirational sort of quotes. Um, on there and sort of just to try and relax the students and get them to, you know, just be a little bit more positive before they go into their exam. Um, and then as soon as it starts to then uh, get closer to um, the time when there's assemblies, um, we then just have um, the assembly welcome slides. Um, so there are sort of, there's almost clear, uh, clear, clear distinction between that when the students are, um, when the students are sort of meant to be doing something or when they're just meant to be just sort of sitting around and, um, you know, having a look at all the house competitions and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, they, they, they realize, oh, there's the, let's say, for instance, there's the Valley House Assembly welcome slide there. I'm meant to be in assembly. So they obviously, you know, either are in Valley or they need to get to tutor time. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the idea of schedules is, or the, the, using schedules effectively really really work even if it is just and we had we had a request from the drama team who are in the hall they didn't want the students distracted by the screen during the lesson time so the le the, the hall is also used for lessons and also for dinner time um so during lesson times it's a fixed you know a relatively stationary image of a school logo and then as soon as break time lunch time and after school kicks in the usual sort of schedule takes place so that that's how we sort of manage the the whole idea of oh I want a countdown. It's not really a countdown, but it does act in the same sort of way. Yeah, but it, it for me for us it's about that inspiration. You know, getting students to feel <coughs> proud the school that they belong to. You know, um, so yeah, um, Alex, do you like do you know you know I think there's always a lot of planning that goes into this. I know you you and Nikki plan lots for your signage, which I just think stand out. What you do for your schools is just incredible. Um, do you think the, a, a matrix idea like this is, is quite useful? What, what, how do you plan out your content for Shirelands? Oh, absolutely. Um, once again, we, uh, when developing our own content, we use our um, trust values to inspire and inform that content. Um, so I definitely think if for any, whether it's a school or any other company, to use those um, missions and values to help form their own matrix with their content. Um, so as part of that, I mean, one of the ways that we plan our content in advance is to do a, a content calendar for the year, uh, which although seems a very long-winded process to start with, it actually does save a lot of time uh, further ahead. Um, so on the termly basis, I will develop that content in advance. Um, during the holiday time so from for this term it's been from like september to all the way up to christmas and then i'll start developing the spring term content um during the holidays um and that just you've all got the content all together you don't have to worry um about developing it last minute um and if you do it's just literally revising that content and just making a few edits so that's a really again long-winded to start with but it's well worth uh, the effort throughout the year yeah, I've put your October calendar up on the screen. And of course, once you've done that, I mean, that's going to work for you on a yearly basis. Yeah, you'll tweak it, you'll change it potentially. But 
you know, having, and it works really well, which we'll come on to for guidance for, for other staff as well, you know, who know that's what focuses for, for the year ahead almost. So um, moving on to quality is always a, uh, one that runs away with us in these sessions, which is good because there's always so much to talk about. So um, moving on to the importance of quality and brand consistency. Uh, Hardeep, you've already talked about this and you told me that students nowadays are content snobs. <laughs> yeah well i mean i can give you i mean my, my my own children like this i mean my 10 year old daughter if she sees um black bars on the left and right she she's like no dad i'm not having it i'm not i can't watch this con i can't watch four by three content it's got <laughs> it's got to be 16 by nine it's got to be you know 4k 1080 at least uh you know she wants it to look good and um i don't know there's sometimes i find it, when i when i when i go into secondary school sometimes i i talk to the to the students and there there's almost sort of a flip on the whole style and and, and substance kind of come you know kind of conversation it's almost like now if it's if it doesn't look good you know um they, they almost kind of switch off it's like well you know it can't it's like they the, the more cleaner the brand and the more cleaner the image the more truer the content that's on screen <laughs> so yeah. it's like you know you have to almost like I say, you have to almost kind of up your game a little bit in terms of just drawing them in by creating good looking content in the first place. Yeah. Um, it, it sort of helps us get over that sort of three second, uh, you know, attention span sort of barrier. You know, if it looks looks smart and it looks good and it, and it can attract their attention. Um, I find a lot with a lot of the students, they're more willing to stand there and have a look and look up and look at the screen and you know, especially, like I said, in areas where they, they might not necessarily already be congregated in, um, you know, so sometimes for signage, you want to get their attention, you kind of have to play the game uh, for them. Yeah, I had a good conversation with Lisa Hawker yesterday, who um, used to be the IT director for ARC Academies. Um, and she said she felt signage had always been hit or miss in schools. We, we missed a, a real kind of communication opportunity. So she feels now the best way to drive it forward is inspire. You create good content, inspire people with signage, and then start to create content that maybe informs a bit more after that. So bring some interest back to signage with some content where people go, oh, wow, and then start to hit people with more inform and what you want them to do. Because I think signage has always been about telling people what to do. And actually, for us, again, it's about inspiring and, and sharing and showcasing content. Um, Gavin, obviously, uh, quality of assets is important, like logos and images. And what do you do to stay on top of that? Um, so, yeah, I, I, I very much agree. Like the, the quality of the image that you're deciding to use is really important, um, especially in an education setting, because like Hardeep said, we have we do have a, uh, a generation of, um, uh, of sort of quality snobs in terms of the presentation snobs. They, uh, you know, and, and we're also trying to educate them in terms of, you know, educate and inspire them to produce good looking stuff um because that is what they expect and that's what we expect from them too so why is it that we have some individuals that said oh that will do you know i i, I don't i don't like i don't like that that will do sort of mindset on a presentation just like i wouldn't like them that will do mindset in a in a in a lesson um what what i what i do with all the sort of um the the imagery imagery that i use the fonts that i use the colors that i use i do have a massive slide deck that sort of has um, pretty much that the it's 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 literally named Trilby announcements, um, and in there is every single slide that I've pretty much put on. Um, if it's following the same sort of theme that we use, the same sort of colours, the same sort of branding, um, so I do keep that all in one place. So when I am looking for the font that we use for sixth form open evening, or the font that I use for open evening, or you know all, all that sort of thing, it's all in one place, um, and it just means that I'm not you know. I'm not, I'm not searching the internet for an image that is going to be, um, you know, really, really low quality. I've already got the high res version. Um, and then that's going to be going on the screen where the students will see it. Um, and just, go, you know, just re-emphasizing the fact we want them to produce good quality work. So why is it that we're, you know, we should be showing them absolutely top quality work as well? Yeah, it sets a standard, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and I do worry about that. I mean, I see content that our customers are uploading and there are various reasons, again, like we've already talked about, you know, time and the knowledge or the skills of someone. But, you know, again, you've got to work out that signage is all about impact, you know. So often we get asked about, can we put our calendar on the screen? Well, yes, you can. But 
for me, a calendar doesn't look good on a digital signage screen. It's for us as a company to think about how we take your calendar and make it look nice on the screen. You know, so again, you've got to be careful. I don't want to see spreadsheets or I don't want to see a newsletter that's a PDF portrait just put, you know, saved and put on a screen. It just doesn't work. There's too much text for one. And again, your viewer time doesn't allow them to read that content in the time that by the screen, you know. I mean, Alex, you know, you're a, a, a high achieving set of schools as a, as a multi-academy trust, you know, and your CEO wants to make sure that brand is consistent and that you're seen as one of the best mats in the country. How do you provide guidance for your staff when it comes to uploading content onto your screens? So the... The important thing that we want to do is make sure that um, schools have some autonomy over their digital signage. So although we have messages from the trust, which comes directly from the central team, it's important that schools are able to reflect on their unique um, identities as well um, as an individual and as well as part of a trust. So as part of that, um, we have a dedicated uh, marketing and branding section on our staff SharePoint portal, um, where staff can readily access a range of resources and uh, links to support um, with their creating of content. And we're using the trust uh, branding as well. Uh, so this includes sections for branded templates, logos um, and materials, which are organised according to each school so that they can easily access um, the materials that they need um, separately. Um, we also have a dedicated section uh, to help with digital marketing communications as part of this too. Uh, so this includes signage uh, for Trilby TV, um, where we explain what Trilby TV is and who they are, um, how they help us, what they do, um, when it comes to digital signage. And we also include helpful guides and videos for staff as well and offer um, training sessions uh, individually too, um, including a range of uh, templates which are readily available to use and links to um, the calendar template and a content catalog through Trilby too, just to help uh, offer additional support and help get them started. Um, they also have the option of contacting us directly to help them create that content um, too, or just give them some uh, tips, um, particularly for uh, other softwares that they could use, Canva being one of them. <laughs> um, and we also have a trust banding uh, guidelines document as well. So if they, um, which highlights how to, how to help maintain a strong brand and identity as well. And things to consider when developing that uh, contract um, content, including the brand architecture that we're using and the strategy when using digital signage too. Um, and particularly when we're using uh, or incorporating the trust logos as well. So where they should be situated um, within that digital signage as well, just so everything's consistent and organized as well. And it's all um, across the board. Yeah, there's a lot goes into successful signage, isn't there? Absolutely. Yeah, which again, I think we've missed. I think we missed that. I think the older solutions were like, again, ticker tape, clocks, logo, it's doing something, so that's okay. But actually, there needs to be a plan in place, if possible. There needs to be a thought about content matrix. Um, and an interesting one for me, Hardeep, because this is where me and you both started, is surely we should be getting the students involved more. I think, I think schools are afraid to give ownership, and I don't know why, but as part of the learning why can't students be creating wonderful content because they're really good at doing that yeah i mean i i think students are by far probably one of the most valuable uh, resources that uh you know that teachers have to hand when especially when it comes to technology because they're just you know uh, they, they, you know a lot of them are quite are so native to, to this technology in their hands that they're great resources so we sh we need to you know we need to in a way give them some some of that responsibility and they thrive on it a lot of them do they they, they love being the person who's oh oh i can help sir or, or miss with this uh particular thing that they don't know and it, it's okay it's all right for, for teachers not to know that it you know that's that maybe that's not their wheelhouse you know they're there to, to teach a lesson and they're great teachers but you know we, we can't expect every teacher to be um a fantastic you know, uh, technologist and, and know how to do videos and know how to do all of that kind of stuff as well. Um, so why not lean on the on the students? And something I always say is that the, the, you know, students are they don't have to be just the content consumers. Like right now, they they are the content creators. And when I go into schools now and I say, okay, guys, what 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 do you guys aspire to be? You know, now that's that that's a job title that that mm -hmm. the students tell me that oh, you know, Holly, I want to be a content creator. Uh, I want to be creating content and 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 putting stuff out there into the world and and so on and so forth. So they're fully fully aware of how 
to make good content because they're consuming it. So, uh, you know, I, I always try and, and advocate for um, members of staff to lean on them where, you know, where, where appropriately, you know, get and use their, use their skills. And they've got the time to do it as well. Teachers don't, <laughs> might not always have the time to do it, but, you know, the students have time that you know, they've got you know, a lot of these apps that, you know, we're talking about today, they're, they're on the, they're, you've got them on, 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 on your smartphones, you've got them on your tablets, you know, they could easily create the content and then, you know, we you know, once it's on Trouble TV, the teacher can then just sign it off and say, "Okay, yeah, that's good. We'll have that." Yeah, and what a great thing to have on your CV. I, I'm, I've seen it from you, Gavin. We'll we'll move into the the content creation now because time's running away with us. So uh, I'm going to let Gavin share his screen and and just give us a, a, a overview. But while you're doing that, Gavin, I mean, your students in the past have created content, and I know some of them have gone on after school to to actually get into that into that profession. Uh, yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, we've had a few ex-students that sort of um, were very, very helpful when they were students. They're, they're, they're still helpful now, to be honest, um, but really, really helpful um, when they were in school creating content, um, you know, f filming our house championships and um, our house championships. If you've never seen them, just follow our Twitter and we've just got amazing uh, plethora of different house championship events, um, darts on a Friday and lunchtime. Um, on the stage is absolutely brilliant and uh, trying to teach the kids afterwards is a nightmare but um, they're all wound up um, but yeah they, they've got they've gone on um, to be sort of like events management and um, one of them owns his own sort of IT solutions company um, one one came in for our sports award to help us out with uh, audio and visual stuff um, so yeah all, all really good and, and like Hardeep says you know they, they consume so much content they're actually quite good at, at making it themselves um so yeah um if if i could just have the um i can't share my screen at the moment because uh there we go how's there that go. yeah nice. that's right so gavin <clears throat> i mean you're a big apple fan so you're going to show us a bit of keynote uh yeah so um yeah keynote um if you don't know it's sort of like the apple alternative to um uh to sort of powerpoint um i really like using it because i always use it um, and I think it's just so easy and it just looks so slick. Um, and also what you find as well, some of the things that you can do within Keynote, you can't do within PowerPoint. Um, and it just adds that little bit of, oh, I didn't know, you know, it, it just draws the eye in with a with a different animation rather than the, the skid with the flames that come in or something like that. There's a slightly different selection of um, animations that can come in. Um, so something that, something relatively recently, so our open evening um, slide, so... This does contain obviously the high res images. Um, it also came, contains the um, the fonts that we were using um, last year with regards to our um, our open evening video, um, our literature that was both used on um, Twitter um, and other social media, um, printed literature as well. So all you know the, the fonts and colours and things are all consistent across all um, all platforms. Um, but just something like this is just so easy to uh, easy to make. Um, so one thing that I think someone mentioned before as well, um, the importance of the slide size, if we are going to make, um, obviously something in keynote, this is 16 by nine. So like the widescreen, um, the, the, no, no, no end, no end of things comes four by three. And then you, you know, you have the black bits down the side. So filling the screen is absolutely important. Um, so one thing that on here is, you know, pretty subtle but just makes it really really clear about the school that you're in obviously the the, the main logo in full color um but in a in a slight slightly well no quite quite heavily sort of um faded out or washed out version um a little watermark of our logo in the back as well just to sort of break up the background a little bit um so yeah just just chucking in the um in the logo so just off screen a minute i'm just dragging in the um, the, the logo from um, my slide deck with all the sort of assets in there. Um, just position it to one side. I like I like the guidelines. Oh yeah, guidelines have to be switched on. Um, oh. <laughs> absolutely, definitely. It just makes everything you know snap to where you want it to be. Um, so yeah, my, I think I'll just I'll just leave it there for now. Um, with regards to sort of open evening, you'll see obviously on the on the second slide, I've got one where you've got the outline. Um, and also one where it's filled in. And I think that's just one, it was obviously used in our open evening video that I did. Um, so it's the consistency across the different platforms. Um, but also it's not just a solid text with solid text. Um, and also it's not loads of different fonts that makes you a little bit confused 
Um, so it's only just two different fonts. Um, and then obviously one of the fonts is used with an outline and one that, uh, one that isn't. Um, so like I said, really, really, really simple. Um, here it is. And I'll just put the outline on there. Um, unfill the text. If I remember, I'll just whack it up a minute to 10 points. Um, take the text off. Uh, and this keynote, Keynote's free with every Mac, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so Mac, iPhone, um, any iOS, um, so all free. Um, a lot, a lot of people sort of try to move to the iPad, but I just like the simplicity of you know the MacBook. I'm going to be using it anyway, um, and I just find that I can do it a lot quicker. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to whack it up a little bit higher. Um, so there's the there's the grid line sort of coming up again, and then I'll just make sure that both of those are central. And then, like, like we had before as well, if I just put the word evening below. Yeah, I, I don't want the outline on that one, but I do want the fill. Um, and then playing around with the size. So in this example, they both match up. I don't really know why I've done that. I just quite like it. Um, and also, I just think it, I, I think it does look better. Um, so let's try it at 250. 200, right, 225 and we'll be done. Yeah, that's that's, that's quite good. Um, and then just positioning them. Um, and then obviously to make them know that this is a, a unique event for 2022, um, we just chucked on the, on the on the date as well in a sort of a slightly, I quite like that font in terms of it almost looks as if it's handwritten across the top, um, but it mixes it up a little bit in terms of, um, also one thing I've just noticed, the importance of spelling things correctly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Evnig, uh, Evnig is not. It's Swedish, Evnig. isn't it? Evnig. Uh, yeah, we'll go for that. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, say it, we'll say it's Swedish. So, yeah, proofreading is really, really important. Um, it is. Yes. However, um, however, where you are when when you are informed of a, a typo or something that is incorrect, I can do it from home and change change the screens in school anyway. So, you know, it's not it's not too much of a nightmare. Um, so if live just, demo. Uh, we'll let you off for a live demos, Gavin. Yeah, that, that's I much appreciated. Um, <laughs> if I just make sure that this is um, uh, correct color. Um, so I really struggle with colors. Um, so being red green deficient in terms of color blindness is an absolute nightmare. So having something um, like the eyedropper is an absolute godsend. Um, so using the eyedropper to go right, I want the color. Um, of the logo to be the font color, I can just go click and then boom, I've got exactly the same color that I need. So that would be my top tip if you do struggle with colors. Um, and then pop that just slightly bigger in the right font and then we're pretty much uh, done apart from the, uh, the watermark and a, and a slight sort of angle shift. Um, let's just leave it at that. Let's go for the font, uh, which is this one. Slight little change on the angle. Um, and one thing I do quite like to do um, is put a little bit of a drop shadow just to make it slightly sort of 3D. Um, not massively obvious on that one there, but you can just sort of slightly see it. It just makes it slightly different. Um, um, and yeah, you, you can get you can get really sort of um, excited. I don't try to get too carried away with things like animations. Um, and certain things can... Uh, certain things can sort of uh, require or do require a little bit of animation, uh, like we saw with the train station one, um, just to sort of um, bring in the uh, or, or draw in the eye of the of the viewer. Um, but yeah, I think I think that. Let me just make sure everything's where it should be. Let's just group it. Let's just place it in the middle, and there we go. We're done. That's not Amazing. too bad. That's pretty that's, good. Yeah, that's pretty similar three to minutes, the original, I think. Three minutes in a webinar, that's pretty good. And, uh, and again, <laughs> what I'm, I think what we're trying to get across to our viewers is that, yes, it takes some skill. <coughs> you're, a, you're a competent user of Keynote, Gavin, but it, it, there's tools out there that will help you create wonderful content that you can personalize yourself, you know. And this is a template that you could then share with lots of your different staff to make sure consistency is kept across 
for, for future restaurants. I mean, this this you could take away open evening 2022 and use this slide for lots and lots of different things at Cleveland School. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when you come to share, I mean, that's just going to go as a as a JPEG out with the share button. <coughs> Uh, yeah, so we had we had the JPEGs going out. Um, so this was actually the first slide that welcomed people into the hall for the presentations. Um, a slightly animated version, like you, just, you may have just seen there, with a um, a slight little trace. Um, as a, again, just to draw in the eye, just to make it move a little bit. Um, a simple trace on the on the date. Um, uh, also, it was used on Twitter and, and, and things like that. So you know, across platform, um, exporters movie, exporters uh, image. Um, job done really easy. Brilliant. All right, so that's keynote. Um, let's move on. Um, so, Hardeep, I'll let you uh, show a little bit of uh, Adobe Express because I know that's a nice, quick one. Yeah, sure, no problem. Let me just As always, my... My, my time management of these webinars is <laughs> always questionable. Let me just uh, share. Uh... Yeah. We spend we spend lots of time leading up to these events or webinars, and I promise you all the world, and then I give you three minutes of panic. <laughs> okay, uh, brilliant. So, um, just sharing my tablet. Can you see that, everyone? Is that all coming? Yes. Okay, Absolutely. fantastic. Uh, okay, so real quick, a whirlwind tour of uh, Adobe. Express. So I've logged into Adobe Express and I'm going to go and just sort of take you through a, a, a little quick scenario where a student might be creating a short form video um, about the World Cup because that's quite topical at the moment. So they're going to click on the plus button and they're going to go down and go straight to video. And of course, I'm not going to uh, choose a template. Uh, I'm going to just start from scratch to show you how easy this is. So World Cup 22, and we'll start from scratch. Uh, and always, lo sorry, lots, of us know, lots of us know this is Adobe Spark video, of course, from the days of Apple training. Um, what I love about this is it always created such a lovely polished outcome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if anybody, uh, any of the, um, the attendees today have used Adobe Spark video before on, on iPad, this is essentially the same application, but it's now it, it's all uh, browser based also. So you can use it on Chromebooks or use it on, on laptops or whatever. Uh, what a lot of uh, my students like about this particular um, part of the video, there is a more advanced version to this called Adobe Rush, which they can edit on again on mobile or on, on a desktop machine. But this is really for creating content really, really quickly. Um, and that's what they're like. You know, what you see is what you get. So all of the options are on this screen. There are no other additional options. So uh, they, they pick this up really, really quickly. So let's say for the first um, slide or the first clip of the, the video, we can uh, import either video content and trim it or text, photos, or just icons. So I'll just go for a simple title just for now. Um, World Cup uh, 20, 2022. Okay, great. And then uh, what I can also do is add in, uh, say, a secondary layer, which in this case will be a photo. And it's now going to ask me on the right hand side whether I want to upload a photo of my own or just search the Adobe Stock Library. So let's do a search here for World Cup. Let's see what comes up. I always have to remind uh, the students when they're searching for football and they're like, there's not enough football. I say, well, Adobe's an American company, so let's we'll have to search for soccer and then a lot more come up. Uh, let's go here for, uh, let's go for that one there. Okay, fantastic. So I'm happy with that. Um, and I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to accept that photograph. It just goes into the first build of this slide. Now, on the right hand side, you can see we can change our layouts if we want to. So if we want to have something in split screen, we can do so from there or have this more as a title page. Again, just change it from there. Change the theme if you want to change the look of the color. Uh, and so I mean, the one that I know Neil's going to be going to love is the fact that, like Gavin said, it's going out to, to widescreen digital signage. So that's the one we want as opposed to it being maybe for social media. But you can change that automatically if you wanted to. Nice. There's also an option here for music. Now, the music option appears automatically because every slide that's made is by default is, is about four seconds. Uh, that can change, obviously, up to 30 seconds. But it does come with its own branded sort of uh, music. I'm not sure if this is going to this is going to share. I have clicked on it to share, but it may not. So apologies if this audio doesn't come across. 
So I'm not sure if, if that came across or uh, uh, or not, but it's playing some some uh, general music at the moment, and that can be changed if you don't like it by going to music here and changing it for something completely different. Uh, again, another big plus for the students is that they can add their own music. So if you've got some really creative, some students and they've created something in GarageBand or, or another music app, they can actually add their own music to their video production from here. So that's always a big win. Right, so that's the, the first slide uh, or the first uh, video uh, clip. So I'm gonna add one more in before I finish up. So I'm gonna click on the plus. And on here, uh, I'm just gonna add in some text uh, and I would like to have like an icon on this side. So I'm gonna change the, uh, the layout firstly to split screen. And what I'll have on this side is, again, I'll go for another photo. Uh, any Americans here today? Let's keep you guys happy by going for soccer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's choose that one there. Yeah, that will do for now. And on this side is why I normally, uh, you know, get the students to, you know, actually start writing in some content about whatever the topic might be. So we'll add some text in here and I'll say, um, my favorite uh, player is, let's just say Kane. It's the captain, so let's go for that. Now, this is what the video looks like at the moment. So I'll just preview it again. Apologies if you can't hear the audio. Okay, great, nice and simple. It looks good. It's really easy to make. They put their, their you know, they're, they're putting all their their text into uh, their video. But I think what always elevates it is that final step is where the students can actually record their own audio. So we have uh, the ability to record our own audio by just clicking on the microphone. So what I'm going to do is just uh, sort of uh, just recite what I've, I've written just there. So I'll just click on the on the microphone button. My favorite player is Kane. Okay, it says here, nice work. He said it's done. I'll just play that back just to check it's worked. My favorite player is Kane. It, it would have worked to everybody. We just had a bit of a technical difficulty getting your audio out. But if you upload that to the finished wall, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that now. So the final thing is that video is finished. I can preview it again and I can share it out with a link or I can just download it, uh, which I'll do in a moment. The final thing is we've been talking about branding and you can brand your content. And there's an option just there. It says add your logo. So again, you get the, you, you can have a bit of consistency out of all the content that the students are making uh, or you maybe as a, as a teacher is making for them for the signage. Um, Bill, OK, so I'm going to download that and I'll hand it back over to you, Neil. I'm really I'm going to have to say uh, apologies to Alex here because we've got three minutes left um, and I knew yeah, you, were gonna, you were going to show some amazing Canva. Um, what I would say when we share the wall, um, if I just share my screen quickly. Um, let's do a window and this. If I just show everybody that there are some really lovely examples on the wall that we'll share with you. I mean, Alex, your, some of your content that you create in Canva and Gavin, what you're creating in keynote is is just fantastic so that will give a, a lot of um, attendees uh, some good ideas um i get the feeling we could almost do a, a whole hour on canva keynote and adobe express like a separate webinar so maybe that's something we'll think about um doing again with maybe a mix of of, of hosts um on those webinars um just to finish up um alex give me your top tips ideas when you're creating digital signage content so my top tips would be to always keep your target audience in mind when, cre when creating your content and how this uh, influences your message delivery as well. Uh, make sure your, deli uh, your delivery of content is high quality. Um, less is more as well, I would say. Keep content and design short and sweet um, and focusing on quality over quantity as well. Uh, make sure your um, signage is consistent. Um, make sure it's on brand, but also make sure to keep it interesting and fresh as well. Don't let your designs get too repetitive. Um, as you can see on the Padlet wall, um, we have the um, brand color scheme available to use on Canva. So I like to switch the designs around a little bit and just use um, different branding colors. Um, so it's still on key and on, um, in branding with the trust. But it just adds that little bit of variety and adding a few design elements to complement that as well, which is really eye-catching um, for our students in particular. 
Um, schedule and create content ahead of time and always make sure to preview and check this before this is published as well. And um, this saves you a lot of time um, ahead as well. And it's all done and uh, dusted for you as well. You don't have to worry about doing it all um, immediately. Um, keep a backlog and record of your content as well. This can always be repurposed and redesigned as well. You don't always necessarily have to recreate content from scratch. Um, and keep learning as well. Um, always be on the lookout for great examples of content, not just within education, but outside of it too. Um, regularly gather feedback um, from audiences or members of staff as well that see your content because they have a lot to contribute as well to this. Um, and also making sure that you're producing content which audiences really want to see. Um, and also keep learning about new trends and software as well that can help you potentially develop. Um, so this is something that I'm always looking to doing um, and even developing some initiatives to help get staff and uh, students more involved in that creating uh, process as well. Thank you. We'll, we'll make sure all those comments are added to the Padlet wall. Gavin, what are you leaving with us today? Oh, can't hear you again. Sorry, you, you crackling out. What was the question? Sorry, what are you leaving us with today, ideas-wise? Um, I think I think what's already been mentioned about the um, the idea of the the high-res images, the the, the, the crisp com content, um, uh, and also having that bank of stuff where you don't need to go around and find everything. You don't need to create everything from scratch every time. Um, there may be something, and I quite like the idea of what Alex just said. Uh, just shifting around the, the, the colours every now and then. The, the colour of the brand is still there, but shifting them around just to make them slightly different, um, you know, and, and not having that static image or static um, uh, uh, slide that you always use, slightly switching it up with the colours, slightly switching up with maybe positioning of, of logos, icons, stuff like that, um, just to make it simple. But like, like, like having that bank, I think, that one sort of, in my case, I've got a keynote slide deck of 50 odd slides that have been produced in the past. You know, you, you never you never know, we may need that mask slide again at some point. Fingers crossed we don't, but uh, <laughs> you, you never know. It might need to come back out again. Thanks, Gavin. And what, what about you, Hardy? Uh, just, um, I think, uh, just, just going to echo what Alex said about the final distribution. Always think about where is it going to end up. So, to that, to that, you know, uh, to that point, if it's going into a staff room or into a, a boardroom, maybe the colours and the and, and the corporate take on it might be different to if it was going into a heavily student populated area. Uh, and and finally, because I'm a big advocate for student voice and getting the, the digital champions involved, do lean on do lean on your uh, on your students because I bet they would just just relish the opportunity to have done something. And then when they see their work on the screen, it gives them that extra boost. It, it's a it's a really great feeling. It really does uh, inspire them to um, you know to take on extra responsibility in other areas of their schoolwork as well. Yeah, and how fantastic to say on your CV when you're leaving Clevedon or any of the schools West Bromwich that I have been a content creator for digital signage at my school. You know, yeah. to have that on the CD, it's about giving ownership to them. And I think we're yeah. still a bit scared to do that at times. Yeah, I so let's agree more. Time has yeah. flown as always. Thank you so much, Gavin, Hadeep, Alex. Thank you so much for your time and your time leading up to this webinar. It's been much appreciated. Um, if there's any questions, we'll answer those offline. Um, I want to thank everybody for signing up and attending and watching today. I've just made a poll live. So if you can let us know what you thought about the webinar, brilliant. Um, if we, when we email you, if you wanna let us know uh, ideas for future webinars, please let us know, cause we're always listening to our customers and our uh, potential customers. So please let us know what would work for the future. Um, so thank you for attending today. Um, the team will be in touch in regards to sharing the Padlet wall. We're gonna password protect it, but there's lots of really good content ideas and feedback from today's webinar on there. Um, and just to say from our perspective, if, if you're not using Trilby TV, you can easily sign up for a trial, a 30 day trial on the website. Uh, so you can do that and you can also sign up for a demo. So slash trial slash demo on the website and that will allow you to see our platform um, in, in its full glory to see if it's something of interest uh, for your school or your uh, multi-academy trust for the future. So again, thank you again. I've got to rush off now and deliver two training sessions to Oasis Academy. So I'm gonna go and get ready for that quickly. But again, thank you very much, Gavin. Thank you, Hardeep. And thank you very much, Alex, for uh, helping us uh, run this creating engaging content for digital signage.
um, webinar. We'll see you all again soon. Have a fantastic day and a fantastic Christmas to everybody as well. Cheers. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. See you later.